The leader of a British political party confirms rumors about an extramarital affair. Disregarding safety, illegal immigrants find a daring new way to pour across the U.S.-Mexican border. To our viewers in the United States and around the world, welcome to World Day. I'm Reed Collins in Washington. And I'm Bobby Batista at the CNN Center in Atlanta. I now intend to get back to work. With those words, Patty Ashdown hopes to end all the talk about his private life. The leader of Britain's Liberal Democrats today admitted he had an extramarital affair in 1986. The woman was his secretary at the time, and he says the affair lasted five months. It's not clear yet what effect his public confession will have on his party leadership. The party may hold the balance of power if the results are indecisive in upcoming general elections. Married to the same woman for 30 years, Ashdown admitted pain about the indiscretion. It is my view that this brief relationship of five years ago is and always should have remained a private and personal matter of concern only to those involved. This has been, as you might guess, an extremely painful experience, but it is one which all involved, and especially my wife Jane and my family and I, have faced together. Rumors of the affair surfaced after a burglary last month at the office of Ashdown Solicitor. Among the items stolen was a document detailing the affair. Ashdown went to court to prevent newspapers from reporting about it, but he said he decided to admit to it to get the press off his back. Northern Ireland officials are defending the decision to release a mentally disturbed constable who subsequently went on a shooting rampage. Constable James Moore tricked his way into the Belfast office of the IRA's political wing yesterday. He killed three people and wounded two others with his own shotgun. Then he killed himself. Officials say Moore had a fine record, but he was apparently devastated by the death of a close colleague. He was arrested Monday night after being found drunk and firing shots over the colleague's grave. At the time, Moore's police revolver was confiscated and he was released into a colleague's custody. Russian President Yeltsin is flying to Paris today, where he is to be received as the first Russian chief of state to visit the city since the Tsar in 1896. Mr. Yeltsin gets the royal treatment this time, a suite at Versailles and a motorcade down the Champs-Élysées. There are four billion francs in unused credits in French banks granted the old Soviet Union that he might claim. Russia can use all it could get, apparently. Consumer prices rose by 300 to 350 percent in January, while the gross national product was falling by more than 16 percent. America's Vice President Dan Quayle left Washington this morning on a trip that will include a visit to the Baltic states. Quayle to become the highest ranked U.S. official to go to Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia since they became independent. He's hoping to show U.S. support for the Baltics and perhaps to win a few votes from the Eastern Europeans living in the United States. Egypt reportedly has arrested two people on suspicion of spying for Israel. Reuters describes them as a man and his daughter, who are Muslim Arabs with Israeli citizenship. An Israeli embassy spokesman in Cairo could not verify the arrests. Egypt is the only Arab state officially at peace with Israel. Amnesty International says women in custody around the world are frequently raped by security sources or forces, rather. The London-based human rights group has issued a report documenting such rape cases in 14 countries. It says many governments refuse to recognize rape as a serious human rights violation. And it says the rapists usually receive only a slap on the wrist. But Amnesty argues that when a government official or agent commits rape, that amounts to torture, and the state is responsible. President Carlos Andres Perez wants Venezuelans to get back to work. He is hoping to still the aftershocks of yesterday's coup attempt. Reports today say shops in Caracas are reopening. It is still not clear how many people died when elite military units rebelled. Up to 1,000 officers and men have been arrested. The coup came as Mr. Paris's popularity was sagging because of economic troubles. He says one goal of the rebellion was his own assassination. Two former East German border guards who'd served along the Berlin Wall were given suspended sentences today. They had been convicted of gunning to death the man in 1984 as he was trying to escape from east to west. Scores of people were killed in similar attempts along that wall. Since reunification, though, this is the second trial focusing on those shoot-to-kill orders issued by the old East German regime. The United States Border Patrol is launching an experimental plan these days to stop a dangerous new tactic by people trying to enter the United States illegally. Paul Bloom has the story. This is the problem. Hundreds, even thousands of illegal migrants have found a new pathway to U.S. soil. Alien smugglers are now directing migrants to dash north 
through the southbound Mexican port of entry gates. The aliens then meet up with smugglers farther up the highway. U.S. border agents will not go into speeding traffic to try and capture them. Our number one concern is we don't want anybody to be killed. If that person continues to run free on the highway, somebody may hit them. The Border Patrol has now brought in dozens of extra agents, and starting Thursday, they will form a human barrier to the aliens who try to run north on the southbound freeway. As officers continuously physically present on the border will deter people from trying to enter. If anybody does enter, they'll be arrested. It could be argued, I suppose, that border officials brought this latest problem on themselves. After all, they've been building this big steel fence the length of the border. And that means that illegal aliens aren't being shipped by van or car as much anymore. Those people who want to go north are doing it on foot. This activity is organized. The people are only there because the smugglers bring them there. If they find they can't enter here, they'll be out of business. Border officials say they'll have to slow traffic on southbound 5, squeeze it into two lanes to make the chase safer for officers. And that's a funnel that we can stop. There'll also be an officer in front of that funnel. Should it become necessary, we can make that whole zone vehicle free very quickly. That sounds a little like a traffic jam to me. Well, it may very well come to that. The alien crackdown and the traffic slowdown will start Thursday morning at 10. Border Patrol officials say the San Diego sector of the border generally accounts for some 50% of all illegal entries into the United States. Still to come on World Day, escaping from Haiti in a small boat with no motor. A first-hand account and close-up pictures of a harrowing trip. And we'll explain why archaeologists needed some help from space to find a city. Freedom's the one! Only one gum passes the test when you've got dental work, and that's Freedent. Freedent won't stick to your dental work, so you can be confident chewing it. And because it also moistens your mouth and freshens your breath, Freedent's in a class by itself. Freedent's the one that took the stick out of gum, and Freedent moistens your mouth. Yeah, moistens your mouth and freshens your breath while you chew. Non-stick Freedent moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. Remember when cats sang for Meow Mix? Meow, 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 meow. Well, now there's an all-new Meow Mix with flavors cats prefer three to one. If cats sang for the old Meow Mix, what'll they do now? All-new Meow Mix. Tastes so good, cats ask for it by name. Meow. To say the least. In the wee small hours of the morning While the whole wide world is fast asleep There's now a stock market that opens for business in the middle of the night. Who on earth would want to trade at this hour? Most of the earth, actually. In the wee small hours of the morning Poly Shades by Minwax. It's a stroke of genius. Poly Shades is rich stain and polyurethane protection in one. Poly Shades gives wood a beautiful protective finish in half the time. Poly Shades by Minwax. Are the Japanese telling us the truth and we just don't want to hear it? Or are they tooting their own horn at America's expense? We'll take a look at where our nation really stands today on Sonya Live, 1 p.m. Eastern only on CNN. The U.S. effort to return thousands of Haitian refugees has hit something of a snag. U.S. and Haitian officials trying to work out details of repatriation with two cutters filled with Haitians now offshore off Haiti. This comes a day after the Bush administration modified its embargo against Haiti, hoping to ease unemployment there. Another larger embargo does remain in effect, however, as CNN's Mike Capps reports. The downtown marketplace, Port-au-Prince, scenes of a daily economic struggle, a struggle made more difficult by trade sanctions imposed by the Organization of American States. The OAS implemented the sanctions four months ago in an effort to reverse the overthrow of elected civilian president, the Reverend Jean-Bertrand Aristide. Officials blame the embargo for shutting down factories and putting one million people out of work. The embargo blocks delivery of many important food items and petroleum products. While the Port-au-Prince upper class appears to be escaping the effects, 
Food and fuel prices have risen sharply. Those struggling to afford food before now find it next to impossible to eat. This truck driver says with no food and no job, he cannot stay in Haiti. This one says he has no work since the embargo. No work means he cannot feed his family. This driver says the embargo keeps his truck idle, generating no money. The truckers are among the few Haitians willing to speak on camera about their country's economic problems. Many other residents told us they fear the military regime, believing if they talk, the military will hunt them down and kill them. But one truck owner readily admits things were better under President Aristide. Only one thing if you want, you know, to everything is good. If the president is coming back, everything will be good. The truck owner says if the economy does not improve, he will return to the U.S. whether the Bush administration allows him to or not. While complaints of no work and no food continue, many here blame the U.S. One Haitian resident said 15 to 20,000 more people returning here from the U.S. hurts those coming back and those still here. Mike Caps, CNN, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. The harrowing story of the escape of Haitian refugees has been captured on videotape. A Life magazine reporter traveled with a boatload of Haitians as they fled their homeland. The group was picked up by the U.S. Coast Guard and sent to Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. The reporter, Ed Barnes, is with us today to give a first-hand account of that trip. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. A personal experience I'm sure you're not soon to forget, and we're going to let you basically narrate the pictures that you shot along this trip. And a few moments ago, we, we showed uh, pictures of people starting to get on the boat in Haiti. Let's right. go back to those. How did this exodus come about, and why were these people so willing to risk their lives for such an uncertain Well, future? this was an amazing story. This, the village that I was in was called Petit Trou du Nep, and they had decided after the, the students and the children in the village had been for Aristide, after the coup, the army came and uh, rampaged through the village. The village decided to save its next generation of children, the kids. So the village put, got, sold everything but their own beds to get the boat and put their kids on it. When I got on the boat, there were supposed to be 64 people going to Miami. Um, but when the, the, the moment came to get on and the, the rendezvous in the, in the swamps, uh, word had gone out and close to 100 and, well, 119 Haitians showed up. No one was refused. So um, you would consider these people political refugees then? Uh, there's no question. Uh, they, they, they wouldn't have left their village uh, hadn't it been for the troubles. Uh, their village is lovely. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's on the sea, it's got, it's got water, it's, there's, they didn't want to leave. Let's move on to the trip itself then. What uh, kind of adventures, and I use the term loosely, did you encounter at sea? Well, uh, everything, uh, it, it was hastily arranged because the army knew about, first of all, two, two uh, reporters going on the trip and, and, and that uh, the boat was leaving. And usually the last thing that happens before a boat leaves is the army shakes it down and steals whatever, whatever's left. The, um, and then we lost our captain and our, our pilot to another boat that paid money. Um, we, uh, we forgot a lot of things. We had to wait outside. Uh, the new pilot we had didn't know the route. He was a coastal captain, and uh, at night we, we started going in the wrong direction. Uh, it, was, it, it, it really was a hasty escape, but uh, to these people, there was no other choice. Why did, why did they head for the United States in the, in, uh, rather than perhaps another island nation in the area? Well, none of the other island nations will have them, and they're not treated. Uh, certainly, uh, if, you don't, if you make Guantanamo, in our village, if you eat three, three, day, three times a week, that, that was pretty good. Uh, Guantanamo, even if you're captured and, and held by the Americans, you, you eat. Uh, I went back to the village after a while, and, and th there's no other choice. And, and Miami is heaven. There's work. There's other Haitians. There's a community where they can go for help. Guantanamo means you live, and being in Haiti or, 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 or going to another Caribbean country where you're sent back or, or abused is, uh, is just not an option. Well, you were eventually intercepted by the U.S. Coast Guard. What happened then? Uh, we, were, we were picked up on the second day, uh, Coast Guard, we, uh, there was a Navy overflight, uh, or Coast Guard overflight, I'm not sure who had the helicopter, and uh, taken on board the Coast Guard Cutter Dauntless. We are treated splendidly, the, the, the Coast Guards were there, just, just wonderful. Um, here you see, uh, we, we already know we're being, um, being picked up, and the Haitians all have an extra set of food. And the first thing that happens is you eat whatever food you have because you don't need it anymore, and it's, it's, it's finally the chance to eat. And then the second, there's a bag of clothes that everyone has, and it's to look good when the, when the Americans come. They, they're very proud people, and they, they want to work, and they, they have families and their, their responsibilities, and they want the Americans to know that they're, they come to work, and they're clean, and they're, they're, they're willing to work. 
So it's important to them to look good. How were you treated by the Coast Guard when you were picked up? Oh, splendidly. I mean, the Coast Guard was, was were, 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 were great. They, they took care of the children. Uh, the Coast Guard treated us the same way they treated the Haitians. We slept on the decks and, and, and did the whole thing. But uh, uh, the Dauntless has a, has a real fine crew. What happened after you got to Guantanamo Bay? Uh, I was thrown out of Cuba almost immediately. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, when I left, everybody was still on the cutter. They, they... Were there international monitors uh, overseeing their safety once they got to Guantanamo? Uh, I don't. I was literally. I took three steps on Guantanamo before the Navy had a C-130 get to get me out of there. So uh, uh, I, I'm not sure. They they were given food and they were waiting to be processed. And I under, my understanding was they can only process about 500 a day. Now on my boat there was more than 500, and the day that we were caught, picked up was one of the biggest days. Uh, that they had, had ever been. There was, there was well, well over a thousand picked up by other cutters. So uh, uh, even, it looked like just the people brought in our day were going to take three or four days just to get off the boats. And we, the camp, I mean, we could see the camp, and the camp is, I mean, it looks like Port-au-Prince. It, it, I mean, they built another, basically, Haitian slum. It's, uh, uh, people mill around, there's no work, there's no, uh, nothing to do. You, you, you just, you, you look out and there's just acres and acres of green tarp with people milling about. We understand the Coast Guard burned the boat that you all arri ar arrived on. Why did yeah. they do that? Well, a couple of reasons. It's, it, it's pretty unsanitary. We, people have been on it for a while. There's a lot of seasickness. We had rough seas in the morning and people were, were, pr were pretty ill. Um, it's, you, uh, you, you can't let it float around out there. It's an obstruction. And, and if you get back, it, it, it can be used again. Have you spoken with family members back in Haiti? Were they aware of the situation? Have they heard from their relatives? I, I went back to the village. Just the, most villages and, and people who send their, their, their people out to America or on the boats never know what happens to them. There's no more word again unless they actually make Miami and start sending money back. But the ones that are in Guantanamo, they don't know if they're in Guantanamo or they're dead. So I went back to the village and told them what was going on and, and said I would try and get back to Guantanamo and talk to um, uh, the... the the people from the boat and they sent messages on the videotape they were pretty amazing uh, in your earlier report people talked about being afraid and they, uh, in, in Haiti parents don't talk in front of their children about politics or things because the children might go outside and somebody might hear it and report it to the army but this village was truly courageous they stood up and they, they, they the messages are don't come back to Haiti I, we're I starving think, I think we have one of those messages on tape don't we and I think it, need, it requires a little translation yeah I, I'm not sure which one you have uh, but the village She's telling her husband is just not to come back. That things are hard here and they're going to get worse, and, and the army is is going to it, it, the army's killing them, and that you should stay where you are because you made it and you survived. Have any of these people been sent back? Do you know? In a first no, as far as I know, there's. I mean, I only came out of Haiti on Thursday, so I, my understanding is they're still being processed. So uh, I think they're they're sort of at the bottom of the list for people to go back, um, and I would suspect that they. Um, I mean, this was a political vote. I don't know how well the, the procedures work in Haiti for, for, or in, in Guantanamo for, for who's political and who's not. But clearly this vote had a, if there's, if, if there's any, any sanity in the system at all, these people will be allowed to stay. One last question briefly. What do you think will happen to them when they're sent back? I, the Army's going to get them. They believe it. I believe it. The Army came for us. Um, I, I, you know, I've heard all this stuff about we don't know of anything. But the villages where the army is and the, and, the, and, the, and the rural areas of Haiti, no one goes out and looks, and people disappear. Ed Barnes, a remarkable journey. Thanks very much for joining us today on World Day. Thank you. Reed? All right, and with help from an eye in the sky, some explorers discover an ancient city lost in the sands of a desert, buried in the sands of time. That story and more is ahead on World Day. Get ready, basketball fans. It's coming right at you. Showtime! Your chance to get every magic moment all on one incredible video. Magic Johnson, always showtime. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the nation's number one sports weekly. Your free video is a dazzling look at the fabulous career of Irvin Magic Johnson. He digs down deep into his bag of tricks to take you on a victory ride you won't forget. Straight down the middle. Still going, still going. Oh! You'll cheer every exciting minute as you follow this leader up and down the court, wherever he goes, from high school to college to the pros. He just keeps on winning with an enthusiasm, a spirit, and style that would change the NBA.
call this toll-free number now to be sure you get in on all the excitement. Three. Two seconds. And his 18-footer wins it. Don't miss the rookie's first NBA championship as he rises above the crowd to stun the Sixers. And you'll be there for all the battles with the legendary Larry Bird, the rivalry that started in college and continued in the NBA. You'll feel the intensity, the frustration, and the excitement as the two fight for the last shot, the one that makes champions. Didn't shoot in five seconds left. Nagy down the middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Yeah! Maddie's just a great basketball player. He's the best I've ever seen. Get 60 minutes of memorable magic, free from Sports Illustrated. Get your free video and 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the Olympic preview and the famous swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. You may use your credit card. Follow all your favorites in Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew and get this memorable video free. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. The magic of Irvin Johnson will always be something special, something we can't forget. Treasure it always. And every week, enjoy the continuing drama and emotion of sports in Sports Illustrated. A legacy of the Space Shuttle Challenger has helped a group of amateur archaeologists rediscover an historic Arabian city. The archaeologists now are slowly uncovering the city, believed to have been Ubar, which dates from 2800 B.C. Using photographs taken in 1984 by Challenger, experts have traced the routes of ancient, nearly invisible roads that led to the ruins. The octagon-shaped city had been the center of the frankincense trade around the time of Jesus Christ. Experts say a limestone sinkhole apparently swallowed the city around 100 A.D. Just ahead on CNN's World Days, uh, Mike Chinoy looks at how the Hong Kong Dynamo is changing hearts and minds in South China. And in Germany, motorists face the unthinkable speed limits. with any long shots meal. 99 cents go bonds. Get yours now. They're going fast. Go fish at Long John Silver's. Now go for Long John's battered dip fish and chicken combo. Just $1.99. In today's global economy, many people commute to work by 747. Often KLMs. That's because we go to more cities in Europe, Africa and the Mideast than all U.S. airlines combined, which helps explain why KLM is the airline of the seasoned traveler, no matter how long the commute. When the aches and pains, the fever and chills of the flu get you, it's important to know doctors are recommending Tylenol four times more than aspirin for the flu. Doctors know there's more medicine in extra strength Tylenol than regular aspirin. It's stronger relief for the aches and chills of the flu. Tylenol, the doctor's choice by four to one. And the pain reliever hospitals use most. And this winter, try new maximum strength Tylenol cough. It's strong medicine for coughs. Thursday night, one of Hollywood's living legends, Academy Award winner Barbara Streisand, in her first live television interview with your phone calls. Thursday night on Larry King Live, 9 Eastern, on CNN. This late story from Ireland in Belfast. Four people were killed by gunfire today in the center of town. Police say the shooting was at a betting office in a Roman Catholic area. It is not clear whether the shooting has anything to do with the continuing sectarian violence in Northern Ireland. Yesterday, as we reported earlier, an emotionally disturbed constable shot and killed three people at the Belfast office of the political wing of the IRA. He later took his own life. In 1997, China is scheduled to take control of Hong Kong, which lies in economically booming southern China. As part of his week-long series, A Tale of Two Chinas, CNN's Mike Chinoy finds it may be the South that winds up controlling the North. From a hillside outpost, a British policeman keeps a watchful eye on Hong Kong's border with China. 
a border which for decades has symbolized the divide between this capitalist British enclave and the giant communist neighbor to its north. But today, just five and a half years before Hong Kong is due to be handed back to China, the border is virtually disappearing, eroded by a tidal wave of Hong Kong investment that has so transformed southern China, people are beginning to ask just who is taking over who. Every day now, 15,000 trucks ferry goods from Hong Kong to China's neighboring Guangdong province and back. And 80,000 people cross the small river which marks the frontier. There's no doubt about it. The uh, economic style of Hong Kong, the social, cultural style of Hong Kong, is really taking over Guangdong province. Uh, Hong Kong currency is widely used in, in the province of Guangdong. Hong Kong time which differs from Peking time, is the time that people normally operate on the province of Guangdong. Hong Kong television uh, is, is watched by more people in Guangdong province than it is in Hong Kong. The explanation for the Hong Kong invasion lies in the market-oriented economic reforms Guangdong has pioneered in the past dozen years. The reforms have lured Hong Kong firms like Cotter Toys and over 10,000 others to move their manufacturing operations across the border. With the open door policy established by China since 1978, uh, China has been able to provide um, cheap labor, cheap land courses. And this is a good marriage for uh, Hong Kong and China uh, in production. Today, between two and three million people in Guangdong work in factories run by Hong Kong companies, producing billions of dollars worth of goods for export and earning for themselves the highest wages, best living standards, and most direct exposure to Western ideas of any of their fellow citizens. I think Hong Kong has changed the lifestyle of uh, Guang the Guangdong province quite a lot. People in Guangdong province can uh, be able to contact uh, quite a lot of foreigners as well as uh, Hong Kongese so that uh, they, they will be able to accept more foreign things. Nowhere is that more evident than in Shenzhen, just across the border from Hong Kong. A rural backwater a decade ago, Shenzhen today boasts a population of two million. Some of China's most modern buildings, one of its two stock exchanges, its only McDonald's, and a general philosophy in which markets are far more important than marks. We are a window to the outside world. The rest of the world can see in Shenzhen a miniature version of the reforms being carried out in the rest of China. And so far, despite the ideological chill in Beijing, the window southern China has so boldly opened to the world shows no sign of slamming shut. Mike Chinoy, CNN, Shenzhen, China. Imagine this is Florida, and that's Walt Disney World, Sea World, Universal Studios, Epcot Center. And this is Kissimmee St. Cloud, offering the closest and most affordable accommodations in the middle of Central Florida's best attractions. Call 1-800-358-KISS and we'll send you our free vacation guide with information on affordable hotels and campgrounds. So if you can stay here, why stay anywhere else? Kissimmee St. Cloud, location is our biggest attraction. Kids, Delmonte Pasta Classics are just a way to hide vegetables and perfectly good noodles and sauce like we wouldn't notice. New Del Monte Pasta Classics. So easy and delicious, some people are nervous. The elegance and class of Astaire and Rogers. The on and off screen sparks of Hepburn and Tracy. The good clean fun of Garland and Rooney. Lovers. Call 1-800-395-0683 and order the perfect book for Valentine's Day. World Day continues, followed by Day Watch. After this local commercial break, next on CNN. Take a glimpse at the future. Marvel at the pace of man's inventive mind. What was space age yesterday is out of date today and antiquated tomorrow. Don't let the world pass you by. Keep up with the science magazine that takes you into the 21st century. Beyond 2000. Thursdays at 9 Eastern, 
only on the Discovery Channel. I decided I want to live in a house. There's a new member of the Dreyer family. Haven't had any violent spells in a long time. One they don't know about yet. What was that? Holly. Neil. Hey, hey, hey. Julie. And Phil. Meet Tom. I'd love a cup of coffee. Gary Busey. Mimi Rogers. Hider in the house. A USA world premiere movie. is CNN. Now checking our top stories on World Day. In Belfast, Northern Ireland, police say four people have been killed by gunmen who opened fire today in a bookmaker's shop. Police say nine others were wounded. So far, no claim of responsibility. Paddy Ashton, the head of a Britain's Liberal Democrat Party, admits to an extramarital affair. Ashdown, who's been married for 30 years, says he had the affair with his secretary five years ago. Says now the information's out, it is time to get back to work. Russian President Boris Yeltsin's on the road again. During a two-day stay in Paris, he is to meet with the French President Mitterrand and other French officials. Discussions expected to center around nuclear weapons in the post-Soviet era. Let's check now the latest financial headlines with Jan Hopkins at the New York Stock Exchange. Morning, Jan. Good morning, Bobby. Investors are in a selling mood on world stock markets today. On Wall Street, stocks have reversed early gains. Right now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down uh, six and three quarters points at a level of 32.66. Yesterday, the Dow closed at a record high, and the Dow had been up five points in the early going today. Volume is heavy again today, 62 million shares changing hands so far. Declining issues outpacing advancing issues by a 7 to 5 margin. The broader and secondary markets are, actually the broader markets are lower, secondary markets are higher. Intel stock right now is up an eighth of a point at 62 and three quarters. It had been up more than one point earlier. The company planning to team up with Japan Sharp Corporation to develop new computer chips. Yesterday's record performance on Wall Street is not helping stocks in London and Tokyo today. In London, shares are extending a two-day losing streak. The FT100 down 10 now at 25.46. Stocks ended lower in Tokyo in dull trading. Nikkei average shed 63 points to 21,936. Talk of lower interest rates is weighing on the dollar today. Yesterday, Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan said he has not ruled out further interest rate cuts. The dollar now down one and a half cents against the British pound, down a pfennig against the German mark, and off a half of a yen against the Japanese currency. Russia's skyrocketing price increases are taking more of a toll than government officials had anticipated. In January, the average Russian product cost three times more than it did in December. To help Russians pay for goods, the government said Wednesday that it plans to increase pensions and cut taxes. Pensions will rise 200 rubles a month. That's about $2. Russia is also chopping the sales tax on some key items in half. I'm Jan Hopkins, reporting live from the New York Stock Exchange. The reunification of Germany is generating a new debate about what had been unthinkable, a speed limit on the up to now unfettered autobahns. Germany's neighbors have speed limits, and so does what was East Germany. Some experts are saying the mix of speeds has caused a rise in accidents, confusion, fatality. A speedometer cap at 130 kilometers an hour, or 81 miles per hour, is being proposed. So far, the German government is opposed to this idea. The Polish President Lech Wałęsa is sending a warning as well as an appeal to the Council of Europe now. Speaking to the 26 democratic countries that make up the Council, Mr. Wałęsa says democracy in Poland will have a precarious life if a market economy is not successfully established. He urged the Council to live up to its responsibilities to Poland now that communism is dead. Specifically, he wants sent an additional aid from Western Europe to anchor the Polish democratic institutions. The Japanese reputation for hard work is getting a boost from a new survey in Tokyo. The Recruit Research Company questioned more than 3,000 male white-collar workers in November. The respondents say they work an average of almost 38 hours of overtime a month. But almost 38% complained of not having enough private time. And nearly 30% complained about low salaries. Well, the issue of whose workers are best came up again this week when the Japanese Prime Minister criticized the American work ethic. 
CNN's Taylor Henry takes a look at the Japanese work ethic. How do you say work ethic in Japanese? Hatarlaku Linrikan. Words used by Prime Minister Kichi Miyazawa this week when he enraged U.S. workers by saying they lack it. But just as the Japanese have their own language, they have their own idea of work ethic, one entirely different from the West, an ethic rooted in the nation's agrarian past. Unlike America, Japan had a scarce supply of land. With farmers plentiful, survival depended not so much on individual initiative as long hours of group effort. The farmer is always busy. No, doesn't mean that he's efficiently busy. Today's 65 million Japanese workers are still busy putting in an average 42 hours a week, about four hours more than their American counterparts. And in the Japanese work ethic, individual devotion to the group effort is still the highest virtue. Many Japanese feel obliged to stay late at the office as much to earn the respect of their bosses and keep fellow workers company as get the job done. Many Japanese workers uh, continue to work uh, uh, to every night uh, to midnight. The structure of the company forces us to work as hard as our bosses if we want to climb up the corporate ladder. Japan has paid a price for all that overtime. A recent survey found 64% of Japanese workers complaining of fatigue and 53% complaining of stress. Possibly as many as 10,000 Japanese die each year from heart attacks, strokes, and other health problems blamed on overwork. Japan appears to be on its way to overcoming the obsession with work that marked the decades of rebuilding after World War II. The government is encouraging companies to give their workers more time off. But with the Japanese work ethic so deeply embedded, many workers here still feel putting in a long day is more important than putting in a productive day. Taylor Henry, CNN, Tokyo. Well, power politics and the big bomb. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought these together and brought the superpowers to the very brink of nuclear war. Coming up on World Day, how the CIA provided insight when the U.S. and Soviets went eyeball to eyeball. Hey, there I go again. Yeah, you always kept me going. Dad, did you ever think to yourself... Someday that little guy will have his own baby? No, not really. I was too busy thinking, how can I afford to raise this kid? Yeah, that's what I've been thinking about with Brian. How can I afford it? Well, I'll tell you how I did it. Since 1928, families have invested with Scudder, America's first family of no-load funds. You'll find so much in Texas, it's like visiting a whole other country. When you call 1-800-8888-TEX, you'll get this free 264-page Texas travel book. Come on. For instance, you can stretch out on over 600 miles of clean, sunny Texas beaches. And if you live to shop, are you in for a treat? Call 1-800-8888-TEX or just ask them. You can even ride the range on a real Texas nude ranch. Texas is a food lover's paradise. Barbecued ribs, sizzling fajitas, our very own Tex-Mex. Remember, call 1-800-8888-TEX for your free travel book. Hello! Thanks. Boy, these folks are so darn friendly. Oh, Texas, it's like a whole other country. CNN is proud to present a continuing series called Democracy in America. We'll explain what candidates are saying, what they've done, and talk to real people about issues they want addressed. Democracy in America, only on CNN. Well, it was the coldest of the Cold War. Thirty years ago, that icy threat of global nuclear war nearly got to be reality because of what we've called the Cuban Missile Crisis. The U.S. President John Kennedy, young and largely unknown and untested in the handling of international crises, walked up to the abyss of nuclear war and stared across into the eyes of the tough, older Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev had managed secretly to get Soviet nuclear missiles into bases he built in Cuba, just 90 miles from the United States. 
So suddenly the Soviet bear had some major cities from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C., directly within its sights and only minutes flight time away. The missiles, as we know, were eventually removed in return for a pledge that the United States would not invade communist Cuba and an understanding that the United States missiles, the Jupiters, would be removed also from Turkey. A new book called Eyeball to Eyeball gives insiders a look at how the secret missiles were actually discovered. The author of that book, Dino Brugioni, is a former CIA analyst who helped discover the missiles himself. It's an interesting compendium as well of the history and development of uh, aerial reconnaissance, we should say. But let's get to the missile crisis as we came to know it. Uh, we were then in a position where a new president had met Mr. Khrushchev in Vienna. This had not been too satisfactory. We had the Berlin crisis on the front burner. All of a sudden, Fidel's Castro Cuba became a, a major item. Now, how did you monitor it, and what were you doing? Well, the first thing, we were, of course, using the U-2. And then after the president's speech to the nation, we employed the low-altitude reconnaissance. And this added a new dimension to the reporting because you could precisely see all of the various pieces of equipment. And uh, that continued on until uh, uh, the blockade, uh, Kennedy instituted the blockade. But then on October the 27th, uh, the crisis entered a new phase. Uh, we reported that morning to the president uh, that the Russians had a capability of salvoing 24 missiles at the United States. They shot down our U-2. Uh, they were firing at our low-altitude reconnaissance planes. They were trying to camouflage the sites. But then, this is also when Khrushchev sent this very labored and, and, and difficult letter to decipher to the, uh, to the president. And uh, that night, uh, the president sent Bobby uh, to, uh, to meet with uh, Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin, and he issued an ultimatum, either take the missiles out or else we were set to bomb and invade. And let me just quote uh, Secretary McNamara when he testified in Congress. He said, Khrushchev knew without any question whatsoever that he f faced the full military power of the United States, including its nuclear weapons. We faced that night, October the 27th, the possibility of launching nuclear weapons, and Khrushchev knew it, and that is the reason, the only reason why he withdrew those weapons. All right, so Khrushchev actually made the... Uh a statement over Moscow radio and not using the cumbersome and the then very cumbersome means of diplomatic communication. And this was one of the first uses of international media to get a message quickly across. But let me take yeah. you back just a moment to uh, September the 9th when a missile, uh, missile aircraft or a U-2 was shot down over China and you fellows were forced to stand down and not observe Cuba anymore. This was the reason why all of a sudden the development of missiledom uh, became such a surprise, wasn't it? Yes, uh, it was kind of divided uh, with McGeorge, Bundy, and uh, Rusk on one side, uh, not wanting the flights over Cuba, and then Bobby Kennedy and McCone, the director of CIA, wanting the, fl wanting, wanting the flights. But then an agent uh, reported that there was an area in which the Cubans were being moved out right. and let's, the Russians were being moved in. Let's get to the in. pictures that you saw okay. then on those times. and. Uh, and we'll see what you saw then as you peruse them on the, on the lighted uh, scopes and tables there. What are we seeing here? Now, to the untrained eye, uh, they might not see anything, but see those slash marks up at the upper part of the photograph? Uh, those little scratches, actually, we knew that that was the start of an intermediate range ballistic missile site. Something and that could fly to 2,200 miles. That's it? right. That, those missiles could strike anywhere in the United States except the extreme uh, northwest, uh, the uh, Spokane, uh, Seattle area. And this was then the big surprise that uh, late in October you finally discovered a, a rapid buildup of missiles, of, 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 of not only that, but I guess uh, medium range as well. Yes. You then, I believe, got to fly closer and got a better look at some of the sites as well. The low altitude aircraft, of course, uh, were employed. These were F-8U Crusaders and uh, RF-101 and here you can clearly see uh, five missiles, uh, the missile-ready tent, and uh, you can also see the fueling and checkout vehicles. The missiles would be brought in that tent, uh, made ready for firing, and then uh, would, would have brought, been brought up to the pad. In your book, Eyeball to Eyeball, you say the president had a little trouble interpreting your interpretation occasionally of what was an occupied site 
and what was an unoccupied site, I guess the launchers and the rest of it. So something happened that sort of helped to explain it in a very humanistic way. Yes, each, each uh, medium-range ballistic missile site had four uh, pads. And if there was a launcher on the pad, we would say every day we would report to the president uh, the number of sites occupied, meaning that they could fire a missile at the United States. And he didn't like military jargon. In fact, hated it. And he got after McCone. He said, there must be a better way of, of, of reporting this to me. And so the, uh, the crisis was over one day. Uh, uh, one day after the crisis was over, one of our low-altitude planes happened to fly over a military latrine. And military you're latrine... You're giving the story away. Are we all right. see it? Maybe, maybe not. But at uh, any rate... Yes, there it is. There it is. All right. So this... Uh, is explained to him uh, the, the, the essence of, a, of an occupied site of some kind. Yes. In the West, in the, in the, in the parts of the South, this is known as a three-holer. It uh, has sides, but it has no roof, and therefore it is subject to observation by U-2. What do you see in there? Is it occupied? Yes. One out of three? There, there's one position occupied and two positions not occupied. When President Kennedy saw this, he said, now I understand occupied, unoccupied perfectly. Why didn't I have this primer earlier? And why didn't we have more information earlier still remains the mystery of the world as to how Kenneth Keating, a Republican senator from New York, could know what you couldn't know because you couldn't fly over. Well, uh, Mr. McCone went after uh, Keating saying, tell me where it is and we'll put a plane over it. He never did reveal the location of the sites. Uh, we came to suspect that he probably got the information from a Cuban at the UN. And so the information was good uh, but uh, he never did reveal his source, nor did he reveal the location. Now we're seeing things not from 70,000 feet, but from 150 miles and seeing them just as clearly, aren't we? Yes. The satellite photography is extremely good. And uh, one of the things now since I retired is here's this marvelous technology and it should be used to monitor the environment. And we're doing some of that too. We've been going back in time to the fall of 1962 and what people could and couldn't see then. We've been talking with Dino Brugioni, who has spent some 10 years writing his inside look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, eyeball to eyeball. We thank you for coming up and letting us eyeball some of the things you saw. Thank World you for Day having continues me. now. Bobby? And still to come on World Day, this walker won't be running on the competitive circuit anymore. Tom Steiner will have that story in the rest of Sports News. You want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. So when I see somebody running their own business, I know they've made a personal commitment to quality, service, and me. That's why I shop where somebody's doing something right. And I know just who it is. You can't go wrong at Value Right. Come in today for Red Hot Specials store-wide, like big savings on Neutrogena shampoo or conditioner, or new Playtex Ultimates, right now at Value Right. Usually, when you send flowers out of town, you give the order to somebody who takes a cut. Then he passes the order to somebody else who takes a cut. But now there's Flowers Direct that actually lets you speak to a florist in the town where you're sending the flowers. Flowers Direct. Or we cut is the middleman. Call Flowers Direct now. 1-800-621-2121. I like a really big, round burger. And I like them really, really thick. They're gonna have a baseball. Smells come up and the juices drip down. I can almost hear it. By the sound, just by the sound, then I know it's ready. Whoa! Wait! It's not done. Done? Nah, it's done. Oh, it's done. A1. It's how burgers are. Perfect. Done. Kevin Johnson drives the right side for the Suns. Nowhere to go. Punch it back outside to Tom Chambers. 20-footer on the way. The goal! This week in the NBA. Sunday morning, 11.30 Eastern on CNN. Let's get the World Day weather now and go to Steve Koch. Steve, how's the world? Well, the world is still round, Reed. Thank you. And uh, first of all, our weather track 
shows South America, and we find a cluster of showers and occasional thunderstorm in western sections of Brazil. Also, the east-central sections of Brazil, you can see a few scattered showers there. And rain is moving up with this low-pressure trough being drawn into the southern tip of South America. These are some of the conditions as of 1200 Greenwich Mean Time. To the Pacific, we want to go, and uh, what used to be a hurricane, Iquica, is now a tropical depression. Winds less than 35 miles per hour. It is dissipating around the Marshall Islands region. T typical showers and thunder showers through Indonesia out to the Indian Ocean. Here's a stationary front I want to highlight. It's from southeastern sections of China just to the south of Japan, and along its length we're finding some scattered showers around Okinawa, for instance, and a couple of snow showers back in Japan. Now let's move ahead to our next graphic. This one is in Africa, and it shows what's going on there. To the south, we do find scattering of showers and thunder showers. Still dry, though, in the central sections here, the central south sections uh, in that region. We do find Angola with a few scattered showers there, and also just the extreme southern tip of uh, Africa. These symbols here representing the blowing sand and dust that are taking place from very strong low-pressure areas. This is just one in a series in the last several days, continuing to bring a lot of blowing uh, sand and dust throughout uh, Egypt, for instance, and northern Africa in that vicinity. Visibility's been cut down. It's been quite a rough situation. As we look at Europe now, we'll find the low pressure area down to the south here. We do find some rain from Greece stretching through Israel. Rain to the south in the warmer air, but snow to the north through Turkey once again. Some scattered snow showers there. Now, the weather pattern setting up here is we're finding very strong winds moving across central Europe, changing the precipitation that's there in the form of rain, changing it to snow from the Alps, stretching all the way over towards Poland. And with that strong surge of winds from the north, another low pressure area will develop in the next several days and move right on through following this low. So the gusty winds down to the south and the Middle East will continue. It also means that snows will be on and off, some of them pretty heavy yesterday in Albertville, France. We saw at least one foot of snow. Well, here's a forecast for a few cities in Europe coming up tomorrow. The Baltic region reporting some snow now at St. Petersburg. That's a look at World Day weather. Bobby? Steve, thanks. The rape trial of boxer Mike Tyson has been temporarily postponed. Tom Steiner is here now with details. And that's because of a deadly fire in Indianapolis, Indiana, early Wednesday morning. It has, has temporarily delayed the Mike Tyson rape trial. And the blaze erupted in an unoccupied lounge of the Indianapolis Athletic Club where jurors in the Tyson trial had been staying. None of the 15 jurors were injured. However, two firefighters and one civilian were killed. Twelve others were injured. Arson has not been ruled out. As for the jurors, they've been relocated to an undisclosed location. It's not clear whether the trial will resume this afternoon. Wednesday night's Welsh Cup soccer match between Swansea City and Cardiff was called off because of the death of Swansea midfielder Alan Davies. The 30-year-old Davies was found dead in his car near his South Wales home. Police say no crime was suspected. Davies played on 11 Welsh international teams and for Manchester United, winners of the FA Cup back in 1983. New Zealand's John Walker, who had hoped to run a sub-four-minute mile as a 40-year-old, won't get the chance now. The former world record holder in the mile announced his retirement from the sport two days after injuring his Achilles tendon in training. Walker competed internationally for more than 20 years, and he says he has no regrets. Civic and business leaders from the state of Washington met with baseball commissioner Faye Vincent yesterday and they discussed efforts to keep the Mariners in Seattle. The delegates pledged to contribute $13 million annually over three years to help keep the team in that city. Last month, a Japanese group made a $100 million offer to buy the Mariners, but Vincent said he thought it was unlikely a sale would be approved because of baseball's preference for local ownership. It is still baseball's view that local ownership, and by that we mean local ownership in the community and North American ownership in specific is the preferred, strongly viewed, uh, preferential ownership for baseball. Well, there's speculation if the proposed J Japanese bid fails, the Mariners will be moved to St. Petersburg, Florida to begin play next year. And now let's spend a moment reviewing all the numbers on your World Day scoreboard. <laughs>
And that is your World Day Sports. Jim Huber will have more sports for you at 12 o'clock Eastern Time and throughout the afternoon. Read. Tom, an 80-pound bundle of joy at the Los Angeles Zoo. The newest resident has two humps, wobbly legs, and some overprotective parents. Just ahead on World Day. Hello, Linus. <coughs> I see your blanket's out for washing. I feel so insecure. Security is why over 45 million people trust MetLife to ensure their lives and health and help plan their retirement. Does MetLife give up blankets? No. But the world-famous MetLife representative is the very symbol of security in an uncertain world. You're right. I feel better already. Get Met. It pays. Freedom's the one. Only one gum passes the test when you've got dental work. And that's Freedent. Freedent won't stick to your dental work, so you can be confident chewing it. And because it also moistens your mouth and freshens your breath, Freedent's in a class by itself. Non-stick free dent. Moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. <coughs> when you work in a doctor's office during cold season, you're going to get a cold. And I've got a butte. Hard to tell? That's because I took this. Advil cold and sinus. From the makers of Advil. It's tough on colds, like Advil is on pain. Gets you through congestion, fever, a bad sore throat. <coughs> Believe me. I know. Advil Cold and Sinus, advanced formula for the cold season. A1, it's how a steak is done. Call me a trendsetter, but I was eating wheat thins before people knew why they were baked and not fried. Now everybody knows who needs a greasy chip, right? Besides, wheat thins are delicious. Delicious is still in, isn't it? Visitors to the Los Angeles Zoo are getting their first peek at a new baby camel. The 80-pound Bactrian camel was born on Monday. Bactrians are two-humped beasts who usually prefer to roam in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia and dry parts of China. This baby camel still has no name. In fact, zookeepers aren't sure of its sex. Officials say the camel's parents are being very protective and won't let zookeepers get a close look. Well, 40 years on the British throne. Tomorrow on World Day, we'll look at Queen Elizabeth on the anniversary of her ascension to the throne. So join us tomorrow at 10 Eastern for that and all the other international news as well. And coming up on CNN's International Hour at 3 Eastern, a chilling tour through the archives of a former police state. Germans who were victims of the Stasi try to exercise the past. I'm Bobby Batiste at CNN Center in Atlanta. And I'm Reed Collins at Washington. Day Watch is next, and here's Donna Kelly with a preview. Donna? Reed and Bobby, thank you. Up next, have mortgage rates already hit bottom? We'll look at that and how the stock market is doing following yesterday's record close. Plus, which air carrier is offering the best deal? You'll want to stay with us. Day Watch is next. Air and Company, after a word from your local cable system here on CNN. Do you realize just how much difference there is in life insurance rates? Would you like your home to look like this home? Let us mail you details of how ABC's seamless siding is helping owners across America turn their homes into beautiful showplaces. We'll show you how we make ABC siding on the job to perfectly fit the walls of your home with no waste and no ugly seams or splices. We'll tell you about our special services and products to treat your roof overhang, gutter, and downspouts. And we'll also tell you about our fine replacement windows, the perfect energy-efficient companion to new ABC seamless siding. Our replacement windows are energy-efficient with double or triple glazing and high-efficiency low-E glass. Our heavy-duty vinyl frames give you up to 36% more PVC than competitive windows. We offer a wonderful world of choice in custom-made windows, traditional double-hung windows, casement windows, sliding windows, and beautiful bay and bow windows. Our windows are as convenient as they are efficient. All styles offer easy cleaning and are maintenance-free. Our windows have been installed in thousands of homes and commercial buildings as well. These fine windows are a giant step ahead of all other windows. 
But because they are sold factory direct by your ABC seamless siding dealer, they are also affordable. Just weigh the facts. Our replacement windows are commercial grade, maintenance free and energy efficient. They are of certified quality and carry a lifetime limited warranty. Replacement windows from your ABC seamless siding dealer. First in engineering, appearance and performance. Are you tired of seeing your hard earned money being thrown out the window? Does it seem like your energy bills are constantly rising? ABC seamless siding, insulation and energy efficient windows can help you lower your energy bills. With ABC Seamless, you can make your home more beautiful on the outside and save money too. As an energy conscious consumer, I fully endorse ABC Seamless Siding. Call today, they will show you how cost effective ABC Seamless really is. Your travel dollars may go farther during the first part of the year due to the bankruptcy protection filing by TWA and increased competition. Tom Parsons of Best Fares Magazine joins us this morning to fill us in on those airline bargains. Tom, what is the absolute best deal you can think of going anywhere? Well, I, the one I like right now is from Boston to Paris, $198 on Northwest and TWA. And if we use a special promotional coupon, we can actually take TWA for, a, for $150 round trip. Tom Parsons will rejoin us with more on air travel just a little later. We'll also check the rest of the news for this Wednesday, February 5th. This is Day Watch with Bob Kane and Donna Kelly. News for the conscientious consumer. Good morning. Reports from Latrobe, Pennsylvania say four people are being held hostage this morning at a school for troubled youths. One radio report says a man with a high-powered rifle is in the St. Vincent Center. It is believed the man's estranged wife is a teacher at the school. And joining us on the phone right now is Randy Gerhard from the Latrobe Bulletin newspaper. Randy, can you confirm whether the man's wife is a teacher at that school? Uh, from what I understand, yes. Uh, the, uh, she is a, a teacher at the school. And is she at the school right now being held as one of the hostages? Uh, yeah, I, I can see the school. Uh, can't, we haven't seen anybody inside the building yet. Can you confirm the numbers for us? Before we had uh, at least two women and now possibly four people being held well, hostage? Yeah, I've, we, I've, heard, uh, I've heard two women and uh, then I've heard four also. Um, originally, uh, I was told two, and uh, one of the women is supposedly pregnant, uh, and they also had a, a gentleman that they thought was the, uh, the, the man with the rifle. Uh, he was uh, in a business suit, but it turned out he wasn't uh, the, the, the guy. This is at the St. Vincent Center for Troubled Youth at the uh, yes, school building. Are there children in there? Uh, I don't think they had any, any children in there at the time. Can you tell us a little bit more about the man? He's been tentatively identified. Uh, is he armed, and how long this has been going on? Well, uh, it all started uh, approximately quarter after seven, and uh, he, the, from what I understand, he is armed either with a shotgun or a high-powered rifle. And how is the communication with the police and, and the hostage taker? Is, is that any good? I, I, I see one report that they are able to talk by phone. Do you know if any demands have been made? Uh, I, I understand that they were asking to see several people, and I heard that they were supposed to be bringing them over. Uh, I haven't seen much action. Everything's more or less at a standstill right now. Uh, like I say, there's uh, a, about 15 uh, state trooper cars uh, parked throughout the area, blocking off both ends of the, of the street. Give us an idea where you are, Randy, and what you can see from your vantage point. Oh, okay, I'm about uh, maybe 100 yards or 120 yards from the school. Um, okay, uh, I'm behind the, well, I'm over in a gas station, uh, Dave Service, and uh, like I said, you really can't see a whole lot. Uh, I'm probably in about the best area to see what's going on, but uh, you may see a couple cars coming in on occasion, state, state police cars coming in. But uh, mostly what you see is a bunch of state troopers who are very cold. All right, Randy Gerhardt in Latrobe, uh, Pennsylvania, with the Latrobe Bulletin. We thank you very much for the information, and we may be checking back with you later. Bob? Well, a lot of homeowners in this country are still hoping they can refinance their homes. There are many of them waiting for mortgage rates to drop a little more. We'll brief you on what we know about interest rates and where they're going when they watch the news. Oh, here are all the graduations. There's your sister in college. Oh, yeah. And there's Michael. Hey, 
That's me in grammar school. <laughs> Mom, how did you and Dad do it? I mean, you put four kids through college. Your dad and I did a smart thing a long time ago. Since 1928, families have invested with Scudder, America's first family of no-load funds. You've heard it from everybody. Mr. Miller, wake up back there. Come on, Miller. 